Hey, what's up everybody? So this video is in honor of Shane Dawson releasing his new video tomorrow. So if you just came for the video, I'm going to be reading from a chapter of my upcoming book called Cancelled, which is examining cancel culture as a whole. So in this chapter, we're going to talk about people who can never be cancelled, like Shane Dawson, Jeffree Star, Tana Mojo, and even Keemstar. So if you just came for that, fast forward to the timestamp that's down below on the bottom of this screen. But for everybody else who is following me, subscribers and everything like that, give me just a minute. I just want to give you some updates real quick. All right, so yeah, as many of you know who have been following me on social media or you've been watching the little trailers and everything, I have been working my butt off on this new book called Cancelled and I was inspired to write it um, after speaking to some people at VidCon. And yeah, so like I said, Shane Dawson is releasing his new video tomorrow. So real quick update. Um, <laughs> when he announced that he was releasing his video this week, I'm like, ah, oh, crap. I'm like, okay, well, maybe he'll release it on Wednesday. Sometimes he releases stuff like during the middle of the week or whatever, but he announced that he is releasing it tomorrow, Friday, which is the same launch date as the book. And the book is free, by the way, if I didn't mention that earlier, it's absolutely free. So anyways, I would have to be a real idiot to try to launch my thing the same day that Shane Dawson is launching his new video. So I'm going to push back the release date until Monday, okay? So bear with me, I wanted to give you guys this video so you got some more stuff, but yeah, for those of you who've been following, I've released a couple preview chapters. There's been a lot of um, you know people talking and just to clear up some confusion, this book isn't just about me. Um, as somebody who has examined a lot of different stories over the last couple of years, this book is mainly examining cancel culture as a whole. So not only will I be, sharing my story and my experience, but I will be examining many other different cancel culture experiences that I've witnessed over this time. And it's not just gonna be talking about YouTubers, I'm also gonna talk about some more mainstream people as well. So real quick, like I said, this book is absolutely free. There's a suggested donation of $5, so I just wanted to take a moment for everybody who's donated so far, like I, I really, really appreciate you. I wanted to thank you so, so much. And like I mentioned, like mainly the, the first 100 bucks of the money that's donated will be going to my editor, Zach, so he can edit the audio version of this book, all right? But anyways, I want to thank all of you. Sorry for the delay. Make sure you're following me on Instagram and Twitter. I'll be giving you more updates. But as of now, the book will be released on Monday, but there's a couple few preview chapters up over on the website. So this video is gonna be a little bit different. I hope you enjoy it, and I'll see y'all soon. While examining cancel culture, I've observed something that's absolutely fascinating, which is cancel culture immunity. There are creators who we're going to discuss, like Shane Dawson, Jeffree Star, Keemstar, and Tana Mojo, who are immune from being canceled. I'm extremely analytical, and I try to understand why some people get canceled and others don't. While I don't have peer-reviewed scientific studies to turn to for these answers, I have some theories that I'll be explaining in this chapter. Before we move forward, I wanna make it very clear that I personally don't believe that any of these creators should be canceled. My goal is for us to further examine why there isn't much rhyme or reason to cancel culture or the hate mob. Aside from Shane Dawson, every person on this list has done or been accused of things far worse than others who have been canceled for much less. I truly believe that this is based on the psychology of expectancy theory. I'll be revisiting some of the ideas I discussed in a video I did in January of 2019 titled Why Jeffree Star Trisha Paytas and Tana Mojo get a free pass. While I don't believe any of these creators should be canceled, the justification cancel culture uses is that people need to be held accountable and justice needs to be served. In many of these stories we're about to discuss, neither of those things really happened. If anything, these creators got a slap on the wrist compared to others who had lesser crimes but their heads were put on the chopping block. We'll start by discussing Tana Mojo. 
I believe Tana Mojo is safe from being canceled because of her brand. Expectancy theory teaches us that we expect different things from different people based on what we know about them. When it comes to Tana Mojo, people don't expect that much from her. She even has a song that her fans absolutely love titled F Up where she glamorizes being, uh, well, um, you know, an F up. The music video actually starts off with her waking up late, smoking a blunt in bed next to a nightstand covered in prescription drugs that most likely aren't prescribed to her. By the way, just as a quick note, my girlfriend's friend informed us that this song sounds a lot better when played at 1.25 speed. You're welcome. So Tana rose to fame with a genre that was popular on YouTube at the time called story time videos. In these videos, Tana would share stories about the outrageous situations she'd get into that involved promiscuous sex, underage drinking, and a whole lot of illegal drug use. I think it's also important to note that not only is Tana's primary demographic children, but she's also fully aware of this fact. I'm not here to knock Tana for promoting these things to her young audience either. I come from the belief system that it's the parents' responsibility to know what their kids are watching. Cancel culture has tried to come after Tana multiple times, but it has failed each time. One of the first times was when a creator by the name of iDubbbz made her the victim of his Content Cop series. If anything should logically end a career, it's when a content cop is made about someone. In this video, he showed without an ounce of doubt that Tana lies constantly and exaggerates her stories quite a bit. Worst of all, she made claims that iDubbbz is a racist, but the content cop showed multiple times in which Tana dropped the N-word with the hard R. Between then and now, much more has happened. Everybody remembers Logan Paul filming a dead body in Japan, but nobody discusses that Tana Mojo did the exact same thing. While her and her friend were having one of their famous wacky days, they went into a bathroom at the beach and there lay a man either dead from a drug overdose or about to die from an overdose. This story is talked about so little, whenever I bring it up, people leave comments that I'm somehow mistaking her with Logan Paul. One of the first videos I made about Tana was talking about her substance abuse. As a recovering prescription drug addict who knows how easily kids are influenced, I had a responsibility to let the viewers know that this wasn't okay. I didn't focus on the fact that she smokes weed because I don't have a problem with other people smoking weed. The issues that I brought up involve her bragging about her illegal prescription drug abuse with drugs like Adderall and Xanax. I even included a clip of Tana driving high on Xanax without a license, which led to her crashing the car while her and her friends laughed about it. Finally, in June of 2018, because of a grudge against VidCon, Tana decided she was gonna throw her own convention called TanaCon. This convention was thrown out of spite and held on the same days as VidCon, for cheaper and right down the street. Thousands of people showed up for this event, and many traveled from different parts of the country, and some traveled from different parts of the world. Unfortunately, due to poor planning and not understanding the massive project of throwing a convention, it failed miserably. Thousands of people were waiting outside in the sun, getting sunburns for hours on end, and the event was canceled on the first day. This was one of the biggest disasters the YouTube community has ever seen. Luckily, Tana is friends with Shane Dawson, who ended up doing a small documentary after the event failed. At the end of it, Tana was able to pass all the blame to the CEO of the company she hired to put on the event. Many people got refunds, but there were thousands of people who lost a ton of money traveling to this event that flopped. It was all good though, because Tana's brand is being an F up, so all was forgiven. It's a year later, and since then, Tana has gained millions of subscribers and even got her own MTV show. Compared to the other stories we discussed in this book, are you confused yet? It's now time to cleanse our palate after discussing the hot mess that is Tana Mojo by discussing someone else who is immune to cancel culture, which is Shane Dawson. Unlike everybody else on this list, Shane Dawson stands out as someone who strives to be a genuinely good person. Shane Dawson has done an incredible job of building a brand that involves being there for his friends, being completely authentic, and doing his best to support other creators. He's one of the original creators on the platform who has built one of the most loyal audiences out there. 
Unfortunately, when you become that famous, it's sure to attract cancel culture. Shane Dawson has been very open about his struggles with mental health. He's discussed his body image issues, his depression and anxiety, as well as his problems with confidence. Much like others who struggle with confidence issues, Shane originally built his brand trying to be loved and get attention in any way he could. When he started on the platform, he made sketches and eventually started a podcast as well. Much like every other person on the planet, Shane just wants to be loved and he's flawed like the rest of us. Another rule of cancel culture is to dig through someone's past until you find something that can get the mob riled up. This has been the bane of Shane's existence. Back in the day, Shane used a lot of edgy humor because he felt it would make people like him. Because of this, people have brought up old sketches he's done where he did blackface while playing different characters, and people even tried to create the narrative that he was a racist. Shane's edgy humor also spilled over to his podcast, Shane and Friends. By the way, I can't imagine the life of people who actually sort through old, hour-long podcasts just to try to find some dirt on someone that might get that person canceled. So people ended up finding a joke Shane made about a child being, you know, sexy, and people ran with the narrative that Shane was a pedophile. Now, if you wanna see what it's like to have a loyal audience, go find the videos people made around this time. Although Shane was greatly affected by these accusations, thousands, if not millions, of people ran to his defense. Most recently, one of the cancel culture detectives with too much time on their hands found another clip from Shane's podcast in which he made a joke about dry humping his cat and then ejaculating on it. Honestly, I don't see how anyone with any sense of logic could not see how this was clearly a joke. Much like comedians who are constantly being attacked, people use that clip to try to say that Shane abuses animals sexually. It was one of the most ridiculous things to happen in cancel culture in a long time, but the hate mob doesn't care. When they want to attack, they hold onto their narrative with a kung fu grip and refuse to let go. I haven't even listed all of the attempts cancel culture has made on Shane. It's extremely sad because you see how much it affects him, and if you've ever watched Shane, you know he's a good person. He messes up just like the rest of us, but he doesn't seem to have a malicious bone in his body. I personally believe cancel culture can never take down Shane because of the loyalty he's built over the last decade. The other thing that he has going for him is that every large creator who matters will always have his back no matter what. In my personal opinion, I believe a lot of creators, both large and small, kiss Shane's butt because having him endorse you is as powerful as being on the list of Oprah's favorite things. And I'm sure Shane knows this as well, and that's why he keeps his friend group really small. Next, let's talk about Jeffree Star. Before we do, I think it's important to note that everyone on this list is in Shane Dawson's circle in some way. So is Shane Dawson causation as to why these other creators can't be canceled? I personally don't think so, but I think there's a very strong correlation. Remember, Shane Dawson is the golden child of YouTube. It's easy to see how people in the community believe that if Shane Dawson hangs out with these people, they can't be all that bad. I assume that the idea is that despite the massive screw-ups of people like Tana Mojo and Jeffree Star, there must be something really good about them if Shane Dawson hangs out with them. So Jeffree Star is a multi-millionaire. He's a cutthroat businessman who has built a makeup empire. He's known for having humble beginnings and being self-made. Now he enjoys all of the finer things in life like his mansion, expensive cars, and a closet that is worth more than you and I will probably make in an entire lifetime. Jeffrey has given the world more than enough reasons to cancel him, but like Tana, his brand keeps him safe. Originally, Jeffrey grew popular on MySpace. He also had a successful music career during the pop punk emo days of the early 2000s. Jeffrey's brand has always been to be a badass gay man who doesn't take crap from anyone. In Shane's series with him, he opened up a lot about his past and how his depression fueled his anger. We were able to empathize with Jeffrey in that series, but did it excuse his behavior? On more than one occasion, people have accused Jeffrey of being racist. So I'm actually half black, and I personally don't think he is, but the N-word was a go-to for him for a long time when he was pissed off. There are many old clips of Jeffree Star being called homosexual slurs, and then he retaliates by calling people racial slurs. Aside from that, people make other claims about Jeffrey being racist, but I personally don't believe those claims hold much water. One reason Jeffrey can't be canceled 
is because anyone who has tried to speak out against Jeffrey or even acts petty towards him has had it blow up in their face. It's honestly like watching Wile E. Coyote go after the Roadrunner. That silly coyote always thinks he has the perfect plan, but it ends up with a stick of dynamite blowing him up or an anvil falling on his head. This is the same thing that happened to people like Manny MUA, Laura Lee, and Thomas Halbert when they tried to go after Jeffrey. Whenever someone goes after Jeffrey, he sits in his mansion on social media platforms like Snapchat and Instagram, drinking Red Bull from a straw and laughing at the failed attempts to take him down. He is completely self aware of the power he has in this community. After the James Charles incident, I'm now convinced there's nothing anyone could do to cancel Jeffree Star. During that time, Tati Westbrook slightly accused James Charles of being a sexual predator. Jeffree Star, with his millions of followers, backed her claims and even said he had evidence. He claimed James Charles was a danger to society, and we'd later find out that he had accused James of sexually molesting or raping straight men. Not only that, in the heat of his anger, Jeffrey publicly attacked James's little brother on Twitter as well. Before James Charles was able to clear his name, most of us in the community began to realize that this situation was being blown way out of proportion. People even started accusing Jeffrey of lying, but Jeffrey claimed he had enough evidence to bury James Charles. With the allegations Jeffrey was making about James, anything short of video evidence of James committing these serious crimes wouldn't do well for Jeffrey. He decided to stand his ground by continuing to say he had evidence to prove it, and he announced that he was going to release all of it in a video. Millions of people sat in anticipation waiting for Jeffrey's video. Even people who have nothing to do with the beauty community were intrigued by this story and were waiting to see what Jeffrey exposed, but it ended up being the biggest tease of 2019 that left millions of people with metaphorical blue balls. Jeffrey released his video and claimed that he had since calmed down and decided he was gonna take the high road. He let everyone know that he wasn't going to release any evidence about James, but he still stands by everything he says. So real quick, let me summarize this for you. Jeffrey Starr claimed that James Charles was a danger to society and he had evidence of this, but he wasn't going to release the information because he wanted this to be over. He wasn't just making the standard beauty community accusations of someone being a bad friend. Jeffrey was claiming that James Charles was doing things that should lock him up for a very long time. I want you to imagine someone saying how much evidence they have against someone like Harvey Weinstein and then saying, Never mind. With this situation, I honestly believe that Jeffrey wised up and realized that he didn't have anything except for rumors, and if he made a move, it would be slander. Jeffrey Star loves his money, and if Jeffrey slandered James Charles, he'd either get the hell suit out of him or he'd have to settle with James for millions of dollars. Nobody with a shred of decency in their body would make these claims and then allow someone who was as big of a danger as he claimed James to be to keep roaming the streets. So yeah, I now believe Jeffree Star will never be canceled. I can't imagine one scenario that Jeffree could possibly get into where he'd get canceled. Even with the James Charles situation, he barely faced any consequences. He lost some subscribers and quickly gained them back. YouTube continues to reward him by putting him on the trending page with every video he uploads. The saddest part is that even if Jeffrey was held accountable for what he did and lost millions of subscribers or YouTube didn't promote his videos, it wouldn't even matter. Jeffree Star would still be a millionaire who can do whatever he wants without the fear of being canceled. As someone who has been canceled for much less than anything Jeffrey has done, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't envious. Lastly, we come to Keemstar. There isn't much to say about Keemstar. He's a cocky YouTuber who has openly gloated about how he can't be canceled even though he's given the internet plenty of reasons to do so. Much like Jeffree Star, since day one, 
Keemstar has built his entire brand around being an a-hole. Like Shane Dawson, many YouTubers suck up to Keemstar, but for a different reason. To this day, I honestly couldn't tell you why they do either. He runs the TMZ of YouTube called Drama Alert, so maybe people are afraid of him. I'm really not sure. It could be the eighth wonder of the world. Like Tana, iDubbbz made a content cop on Keemstar that got over 27 million views. Not only would you think that the content cop would have destroyed Keemstar's career, but there were many things not even included in the video that happened before as well as later on that should have ruined him. There are clips of Keemstar also dropping the N-word with a hard R. And by the way, real quick side note, this is an interesting pattern that I'm just now noticing in this chapter. Keemstar also falsely accused an elderly man of being a pedophile to his massive audience. He even encouraged the doxing of a YouTuber he didn't like named Just Destiny. If you don't know what doxing is, it's when you release someone's private information like their address, phone number, or place of employment. Doxing is usually a death sentence on YouTube, but Keemstar had no problem admitting to it and saying nobody could do a damn thing about it. Finally, there's the worst accusation, which I don't agree with at all. Keemstar and I have a history. I've openly condemned the way he talks about mental illness. If there's anyone on social media who has perpetuated the stigma, it's Keemstar. About a month prior to writing this chapter, another YouTuber and influencer named Desmond Etika Amofa sadly took his own life, and many tried to blame Keemstar. Even with all of the bad blood between Keemstar and I, I denounced the people who made this claim because it wasn't fair to put the blame on Keem. But it's a serious narrative that was created about Keemstar that still did not cancel him. Real quick side note, this isn't actually in the book, but I just want to add this. Um, it really doesn't seem like Keemstar has actually learned anything from that scenario because now he's been on social media poking and prodding at Trisha Paytas making fun of her potentially being mentally ill. So as we come to the end of this chapter, I want you to reflect on it. Maybe even bookmark this chapter. Compare it to the other stories in this book of people who have been canceled, including myself. Ask yourself, who had worse offenses compared to the people in this chapter? See if you can find any patterns of why some people can never be canceled. I'm seriously interested in your thoughts. Do you think it's because of their brand and expectancy theory? Or do you think it's something else? Feel free to email me, tweet at me, or DM me with your thoughts because it is something that's absolutely fascinating. But yeah, that's the end of the video. That's the end of this chapter. Thank you so much for listening. And yeah, make sure that you follow me on social media at The Rewired Soul. The book canceled is free or will be free and it will be out on Monday. Okay, so make sure you follow me on social media for all of the updates. Thanks for watching. Enjoy the new Shane Dawson film and I'll see you next time.